PCN is brought to your community thanks to the support of Comcast. PCN, Pennsylvania's neighborhood. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Game 7 of the 8-game weekend here in State College, Pennsylvania, on the campus of the Penn State University here at the Bryce Jordan Center, PIAA Basketball Championship time. And this is going to be another one of an outstanding game. We have done nothing but great basketball games tonight. Archbishop Carroll taking on Lampeter Strasburg in the girls' AAA title game. And this should be a dandy. Once again, a full house. They're moving into a full house. Great crowds on hand the whole weekend for this game. As you can see, Archbishop Carroll 29 and 1 on the season. Lampeter Strasburg 29 and 3. I'm Jerry Fisher along with Steve Bowen. Steve, another great game. It, it, it might get redundant saying it, but that's what we've had all weekend long. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Archbishop Carroll first. And they come in 29 and 1. They've had a national ranking in uh, several different polls. And one of the things, well, you take a look at where they're at first. Lampeter Strasburg in Lancaster County and Archbishop Carroll out of the Philadelphia Catholic League. Uh, they were one of the teams that I think everybody earmarked because of their success uh, over the past few years in the uh, Philadelphia Catholic League. But head coach Chuck Creighton wasn't quite sure about uh, what kind of a team that he had because they needed a couple of pieces to gel together. Well, they have gelled together. Their only loss this season was to quad a uh, finalist, Cardinal O'Hara. So uh, Chuck Creighton really proud of how his team has played this year. But guess what? They play defense. And guess what? They're led by a very, very smooth ball handling floor leader in Carrie Shields. She uh, is the team leader in three-pointers made. She leads them in assists, is second in points. Uh, she does everything to get this far. Uh, we've said it, talk about redundancy. You need a good floor leader. Carrie Shields is exactly that for the uh, the Archbishop Carroll team. And they're not afraid to jack it up. 25 three-point no. shots in their last game. They're very successful that way. Let's see how they got here. Well, West York and Eastern York, there were the games that they had handily in hand. Same with Mount St. Joseph. They kind of did Lampeter Strasburg a, a favor in the regional final, downing their nemesis from District 3, and that's Trinity. So uh, they're here off of offense and defense. You can see they can score a lot, and at times they can play really stingy defense. So uh, this is an Archbishop Carroll team that, that comes here you know, with a lot of confidence, but they have one more step to go. Well, they're going to be going up against a team that's putting a lot of points on the board in Lampeter Strasburg. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride <laughs> until this weekend. Lampeter Strasburg out of District 3 always seemed to be the bridesmaid to Trinity High School. Well, because of redistricting and because of the inclusion of the uh, Philadelphia City and Catholic Leagues, Lampeter Strasburg played in the Western bracket. There's Matt Wyan, their head coach, and uh, he thought maybe he was getting a break because he wouldn't have to face Trinity. Well, if we take a look at, at, uh, at how they got there a little bit later, we'll, we'll show you that. But guess what? They also have a very, very strong, smooth handling guard over 1,000 points in her career, and that's Lisa Boyer. She is uh, absolutely one of those great ball handlers. You're, you're going to like watching her play tonight, folks, because she's very smooth, quick off the dribble, great feet with the basketball, and uh, she also uh, is, is one of those great court vision folks. But... Let's take a look at, at 20, 29 and 3 and how they got here. Uh, they downed Villa Maria, and that's Villa Maria out of District 1, not the double-A uh, champs. The quarterfinal, they uh, smashed Palmyra. And then, because they shifted over to the West, a couple of District 10 teams and good ones, they downed Mercier's Prep in the semifinal and really played perhaps their best game of the season in downing General McLean at the time, the number one team in the state. Uh, by 10 points uh, last Thursday night. So uh, they're here based on their quality of play. They can run a lot of different sets. They're good in the half court, but they also like to push it. Defensively, they're very, very good. Um, not, not a stingy defense, but they play pretty good defense. They don't allow the other team to get into their game. 132 points in the last two games. They can put some points on the board. Let's go to Chris Peterson, the public address announcer for the introduction of the starting lineups for tonight's uh, AAA Girls Championship game and our national anthem. On behalf of the PIAA and the Bryce Jordan Center, we want to thank you for your attendance and welcome you to the 2009 PIAA Class AAA Girls State Championship between the Patriots of Archbishop Carroll and the pioneers of Lampeter Strasburg. 
And now, let's meet the starting lineups. For the visiting team, the District 12 champs, the Patriots of Ar Archbishop Carroll. At guard, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Carrie Shields. At guard, a 5'10 senior, number 11, Holly Mershon. At forward, a 5'11 sophomore, number 22, Emily Fazzini. At guard, a 5'6 junior, number 32, Aaron Shields. And at forward, a six foot senior, number 42, Caitlin Cole. The head coach of the Patriots is Chuck Creighton. He is assisted by Rini Shields, Jerry Olinger, and Jim Corkery. The athletic director is Fran Murphy, and the principal is Dave Dickens. And now for the home team, the District 3 champs from Pioneer, the Pioneers of Lampeter Strasburg. At guard, a 5'7", senior number 21, Danielle Rittenhouse. At guard, a 5'7", senior number 23, Lisa Boyer. At forward, a 5'9", senior number 25, Katie Lynch. At center, a 6'1", senior number 31, Renee Fritz. And at guard, a 5'6 sophomore, number 32, Katie Andrews. The head coach of the Pioneers is Matt Weand, and he is assisted by Carl Keener, Mark Straub, Jeremy Messinger, and Anthony Fink. The athletic director is Matt Sanger, and the principal is Carol Staub. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America and those currently serving her with the singing of our national anthem, by Rachel Lebowski of Our Lady of Lords High School. PIAA Championships Color Guard is provided by Marion Center High School Air Force Junior ROTC. And a beautiful rendition of the national anthem here at the Bryce Jordan Center. And uh, we have had some great young talent. Uh, as let's check out the starting lineups before we get something, uh, before we get this game started. For the AC Patriots, we mentioned Carrie Shields, her younger sister Erin, also in the starting lineup. Also watch out for Caitlin Cole at 19 points and 19 rebounds in their semifinal victory this past Thursday night. We see Lisa Boyer, also the other guard, 21, Danielle Rittenhouse. She also a thousand point score along with Boyer and Katie Lynch, uh, Renee Fritz, and Katie Andrews. It'll be interesting to see the matchup between 42 Cole for Archbishop Carroll and uh, Fritz 31 for Lampeter Strasburg. And here's the look at our officials. Rebecca DiGregorio in the middle, in the middle, uh, flanked on each side by Scott Fodai and Timothy Zola. And that's a pretty good look at the young lady that uh, 
Steve was just talking about Renee Fritz. Fritz controls the tip, and it is batted around and controlled by Katie Andrews, who gets the ball into the hands of Lynch to set things up. Now into the hands of Lisa Boyer. Then Peter Strasburg in the white, and Bishop Carroll in the black. Good ball movement by Strasburg. Backdoor cut. Here is a nice left-handed shot up and in by Danielle Rittenhouse. And it's a two to nothing lead, and we've got another great crowd on hand tonight. Nice job with a spread offense and a motion offense. They uh, they did a, a great job of moving without the basketball. And there's a nice backdoor cut, putting it off the glass is Katie Andrews, and she gets the bucket. We're tied at two. Speaking of ball movement and, and great spacing. And there's a nice steal. They're going to call a foul, and the foul will go against number 31. And, uh, or number 11, I beg your pardon. That is uh, Holly Mershon. The 5'11 senior, first foul of the game, and obviously the first against Mershon. Glenn Peter Strasburg to inbound the ball. They get it into Boyer, who is the person they want to handle the ball, Steve. Oh, I love, love watching long guards, high dribbles, and using both hands. It's, it's good basketball. Yep. There's a nice drive down low, and we're going to have a foul before the pass and the shot. And again, good penetration on the part of Katie Andrews. And let's see who the foul goes against. It will be against number 22, and that'll be Emily Fazzini, a 5'9 sophomore, picking up the personal foul. And there's a quick shot on the inbounds pass. That might have been partially blocked, and Fazzini gets the rebound. And back the other way come the Patriots. Here's a three-point shot on the way. It's short, and the long rebound comes out to Andrews. And a lot of pressure being applied. And oh, what a what a collision on a pick set by Katie Lynch. And uh, that was something else. Lisa Boyer in traffic gets the ball into the hands of Lynch. Lynch drives, leads in against traffic, and somehow got that shot to fall. Nice job on that play that time. And good strong move. Four to two in favor of Lampeter Strasburg. Looking for the backdoor cut again, and there is Fritz. Long arms reaching out and picking it off. Boyer flying down the floor and has the ball taken right out of her pocket. And that's a nice steal by Shields down low. We're going to have a foul. Is going to the basket strong was Caitlin Cole. And a foul against Lampeter Strasburg. Yeah, we talked about Cole with uh, a double double the last game, 19 and 19. And well, we're going to see here the steal and the eventual layup pass that time. Foul goes against Katie Andrews. And Cole at the line. First one on the way and short, no good. Four to two in favor of the Pioneers. It's a good shot at the form. It will not fall. And the rebound is pulled down by Strasburg. Now Katie Boyer gets ahead of the pack. Nice job by number 32. That is Aaron Shields defensively for Archbishop Carroll. And then forcing Boyer to put her foot on the sideline right in front of the Archbishop Carroll bench. And the turnover goes over to the Patriots. Yeah, these aren't the lockdown defensive teams that we've seen earlier in, in this weekend. These are just teams that just get after it defensively. They're going to make some mistakes. They're going to overplay certain, certain players and certain cuts and certain ball screens. but. Well, they do get after it. There's a shot missed on the weak side. Caitlin Cole gets the rebound and puts it right back up and in. We are tied at four. Good ball movement in the backcourt by Strasburg, trying to avoid the trap. And Archbishop Carroll will trap any chance they can. And here's a backdoor cut by Boyer. Her shot is up and strong, and a rebound is pulled down by Caitlin Cole, and they're going to call a foul, stepping in to try to take the ball out of Cole's hands. I believe it was number 21. Let's wait and see until the, the call is made. Yep. It goes against Rittenhouse, and that'll be her first personal foul. Cole's been very active on both ends in the post. Look for that to continue. Playing her best basketball of the season at the greatest time. Backdoor cut. Ball is taken out of the hands of Kelly Mershon. She's able to save it, get into the hands of Kerry Shields. And now a deep three on the way. That is short, no good. And getting the rebound, offensive rebound for Aaron Shields. That's her second in a row. She'll take a three and knock it down. She's hit 60 so far this season. And that's second on the team. 
Great hustle on Shields' part, going after that offensive rebound and creating an opportunity for herself. Now Boyer comes across that timeline and is trapped but does a nice job getting it away. There's a shot attempted on the wing or down on the baseline by Katie Andrews and a nice defensive play by Holly Mershon to get the block, but the ball will stay in the hands of the Pioneers. Yeah, we'll see here. And Nice job of coming over by Mershon. Pass into Boyer. She's had a tough time getting her offense going so far here in the early going, being blanketed by Kerry Shields. Here on the, on the right side, they'll look for the drive. It's not there. They go the left elbow. That shot up by Fritz is no good. Back the other way comes Archbishop Carroll. 7-4 in favor of the Patriots here at the Bryce Jordan Center. Skip it across to Carrie Shields. She'll take the three-point shot. Looks pretty good, and it is. Tremendous use of, of the screen. It wasn't, it wasn't one of those hard screens. She just kind of flowed into it and around it. There was no help after the screen. It is so important when you're using a pick to run your defender into the pick to make it work. There's a shot on the wing by Rittenhouse. It's no good. Offensive rebound pulled down. And here is Boyer trying to make something happen and cannot. And another tough shot. And Fritz does not see the breakout by Cole, but Cole missed the shot. So back the other way comes Lampadier Strasburg. Boyer, it looks like she's getting double teamed every time she touches the ball. And there's the baseline jumper up and good by Rittenhouse. And makes it 10 to six. Yeah, there's no doubt Chuck Creighton saw some, some film, uh, these two teams being from the eastern side of the state, just in different brackets. Well, you gotta figure that he probably saw a little bit of tape and knows how good Boyer is. Deep three on the way, that is good again. That shot by Aaron Shields. I think he knows how good Aaron Shields is, number 32 on his team, because they've run two straight plays for her. And here's a drive to the basket. We're gonna have a blocking foul, and the foul is going to go against Kerry Shields. Kerry is... Uh, there's three sisters, I believe, on this team. There are. And going to the free throw line for the Pioneers will be Katie Lynch, a 5'9 senior. Good look at the senior there. She gets set to take her free throws. Yeah, you can imagine in about 10 years, the Shield sisters are just going to hop in a station wagon and play in three-on-three -three tournaments all over the country. Well, I'll tell you what. And probably win a lot of them, too. Absolutely. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you were here or if you uh, had a chance to watch the other game with North Catholic, there were four different longs in the starting lineup. How would you like to go to that family reunion and play the pickup game? Yeah, and the, and the dad of one of them is the coach. <laughs> Second free throw on the way. That one is good. One for two from the shooting department. Katie Lynch gets one for two. 13 to seven. And this... Uh, Archbishop Carroll team will throw it up as we said in the pregame. They had shot 25 threes in their last game. Trying to find something inside. Here's a little opening and the jump shot is up and good by Cole. And they're finding some holes in that defense. They're also being patient when they pick up the ball. A lot of times players will panic. Not so the Patriots of Archbishop Carroll. There Fritz gets a nice little pass on the inside. He's able to put it in. Making the score 15 to nine. Both of these teams very well coached. Both of these teams moving very well. Here is Cole gets the ball back to Kerry Shields now to get things rolling. On the wing into the hands of Mary Kate McCann who checked in at the free throw line. Cole thought about it, now goes in the corner, driving baseline, but being cut off is Jen Carney. And now looking at a deep three was Shields. Now she'll drive down low, puts it off the glass and good. Great job by Aaron Shields. And she is on fire in this first quarter. Here comes Boyer down the lane, has to hand it off to Kelsey Souders. Now another drive to the basket. This one is going to fall. And a very aggressive move to the basket by Katie Lynch. Gets the bucket, and she'll get an opportunity to try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. The foul will go against Mary-Kate McCann. We'll watch it here. Lynch, strong drive. Uses her opposite hand. This is her second trip to the free throw line this evening. 17-11 is the score. Katie Lynch looking to close that gap by one more point, and 
is able to convert. Carrie Shields bringing the ball down floor out there along with Holly Mershon, Aaron Shields, Mary Kate McCann, and Jen Carney, Aaron Shields, to Mary Kate. Oh, there's an interesting call. Mary Kate McCann hits the shot and is fouled after the shot. The bucket goes, so it will count. And let's see who the foul goes against. I think it's on, uh, it'll be on 25. That's uh, Katie Lynch. Katie Lynch. So the three-pointer counts. She gets another free throw. I think it was a two. I'm not positive. Was it a two? Thanks, guys. Oh, okay. Substitution into the game from Lampeter Strasburg. We'll get it for you here in just a moment. Free throw is up and good by McCann. And Boyer takes the inbounds pass. And they're double teaming everywhere, and that's causing some problems for Lampeter Strasburg. Here's a drive to the basket, and an offensive foul is called, and that will go against Kelsey Souders. The 5'6 sophomore tried to go to the basket a little too strong and picking up the personal foul. Yeah, there just hasn't been any flow to the, the uh, Pioneers offense so far tonight, and a lot of that is due in part to the uh, to the Archbishop Carroll defense, but but really, you know, the, the spacing hasn't been that good. They've got all four guard players or all four wing players up above the free throw line trying to run something off of that. The screens aren't that good. They need to get a little bit more involved. And there's a three-pointer from the corner from Carey Shields, and the lead is now 23 to 12, under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Nice kick out, long three-pointer on the way, and good for Katie Lynch. Yeah, great job by Rittenhouse. Spin move, saw that she was not gonna be able to get to the basket, kicked it out to Lynch, top of the circle. She got to square her feet, set or square her shoulders, set her feet. And with the clock down to about 20 seconds, it almost looks like Archbishop Carroll is, may wait for the last shot, but now they get their offense into gear. And they will not wait. They will take the three and convert the three. Carey Shields another three-pointer. I, I don't think they know how to wait. When they see a three-pointer, if it's remotely open, they take it. And Boyer again runs into trouble. I'm that's sorry. A, that's a fun way, to, fun way to watch basketball anyway. I'm not sure it's fun to coach that way. Jen Carney stepped in to tie up Boyer. So the ball goes over to Archbishop Carroll. There we see. 2.1 seconds to go. Yeah, we see Carey Shields with with the three-pointer. And the desperation heave after the intercepted pass by Rittenhouse, or I beg your pardon, by uh, number 32. That is uh, Aaron Shields is no good. And that's the end of the first quarter with Archbishop Carroll, an 11-point lead, 26 to 15 over Lampeter Strasburg. From the Bryce Jordan Center at Penn State, back with more after this on PCN. This PIAA Sports Championship on PCN is underwritten by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties. Every day, ABSCUF faculty and coaches of the 14 state system universities are making the difference in the lives of students. Committed, dedicated, that's ABSCUF, Pennsylvania's own state system faculty. The Pennsylvania Athletic Trainers Society is proud to be a part of today's championship coverage. For more information, visit gopats.org. The Pennsylvania Department of Health reminds you that help to stop smoking is available by calling the Pennsylvania Free Quit Line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW or visit determinedtoquit.com. The Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency is a strong supporter of the PIAA Basketball Championships on PCN. PHFA helps make the Commonwealth a great place to call home. The Pennsylvania State Corrections Officers Association. We patrol the toughest blocks in the state. Welcome back to the Bryce Jordan Center. Archbishop Carroll, an 11-point lead in the start of the second quarter, 26-15. Jerry Fisher along with Steve Bowen here on PCN. 
Very happy to be here with you. Uh, wishing Kelly Goodman uh, some good recovery time who broke an ankle in an accident and uh, was unable to be here. I was lucky enough to be asked to step in and uh, it's been a great, I really have enjoyed working with you, Steve. I'm amazed at the knowledge you have about PIAA girls basketball. And I'm being very serious about that. <laughs> I was gonna say, so are a lot of other people. <laughs> <laughs> First quarter was, was really bombs away for Archbishop Carroll. They were 10 for 14 for 71% and five of seven from beyond three point, which is also 71%. Yeah, that's not bad. Carry Shields, three of three. Aaron Shields, two of three. How about the Shields sisters in threes? They're five of six. And they have 19 of Archbishop Carroll's 26 points. A good ball movement and a great steal. And this is taken away by Holly Mershon. She will take it down the floor and lays it up a little too strong. Right there for the rebound is Carrie Shields, but the ball is blocked out of bounds, and that's good hustle by uh, Lampeter Strasburg to get back because they could have easily just said, okay, take the layup and we'll we'll let you have it. Yeah, but if you're Matt Wyan, you got to get something going offensively because they just have been stagnant, haven't been able to get any rhythm, any flow, nothing. And number 11, Holly Mershon, a little drive to the right from about five feet away is able to knock it down. And Carroll's really having their way with the Lampeter Strasburg D. At the top of the key, this is uh, Jessica Manchek, who's just checked into the game. Back outside to the top of the circle to Rittenhouse. And Lampeter Strasburg, they're all standing around right now, Steve, and that's not good. There's a shot put up too strong. But the rebound is pulled down by Boyer. Boyer now takes a three. That's no good. A nice job by Fritz to get the rebound and put it right back up and in. She's really been the, uh, the bellwether for them uh, on the boards. I was, now I, with four points. I was watching her in warm-ups, and I was very impressed with the, the way she handles the ball and moves down on the block. Down low they go, and an attempted move to the basket by Holly Mershon goes off of her foot and out of bounds. I just want the folks to, to watch the next possession by each team and watch the difference just in, in I, I guess for lack of a better term, attitude of running the offense. There's, there's the tentative nature that the pioneers have shown so far, and just just a, a real confidence in, in what Carroll has shown. That's a great point, Steve. I think that is something you have to watch for. Here's a ball tipped and almost stolen by Carroll. Now there's a tie-up on the floor, and Archbishop Carroll will get the basketball. They are trapping after they come across the midcourt strike, and they're not afraid to trap wherever. Yep. And there's the end of the play. Nice job by Emily Fazzini. Carroll with the basketball, doing a little three-man weave out front. Aaron Shields on the right side to Fazzini. Here's a drive to the basket. Nice block by Fritz. And they'll look for a fast break opportunity, but it is not there. And settling things down will be Rittenhouse as she brings it up the floor. Hands it off to Lynch, and the ball's knocked out of the hands of Andrews, and back the other way comes Archbishop Carroll. They try to make a pass, not a good one, but Mershon is able to get it back. Long skip pass across the way, takes out. And I'll tell you, I did a game in uh, Purdue this year where the ball hit my laptop computer, <laughs> destroyed it. We just saw a laptop get hit over here. I hope that guy's a little more fortunate than I am. Here right. is a nice drive down the between some double.